So welcome everyone. Thanks for joining me today. Um, today we're going to talk about first of all what is CUDA quantum and then get into some code examples of how you can scale your code and get speed up. We'll talk about some simulators and backends that CUDA quantum supports. We'll touch on VQE and noise modeling. At the end, I'll share some resources that will be helpful for you during the hackathon and some specific hackathon instructions uh, on, on our environment. So let's get started. Um, so really, quantum computers will accelerate some of today's most important problems, but CPUs and GPUs will still be needed, and workflows will be hybrid. Uh, GPUs can also enhance the performance and development of QPUs and can run quantum simulations at scale. And that's exactly why we built CUDA Quantum, for developers to simply be able to integrate these heterogeneous computes uh, and accelerating supercomputing. So CUDA Quantum is really a single source Python and C++ programming models. Um, it has high performance compiler for this kind of hybrid systems that I was talking about. It is QPU agnostic. It works with any types of QPU, whether it's emulated or physical QPU. And it's interoperable with all the leading scientific computing and AI tools and libraries that you already know. Um, and it's really built for performance. So it will perform significantly better than alternative Python frameworks. Uh, this one example is of the query of hydrogen chain, but uh, you can expect uh, some significant improvements in terms of performance. Okay, so let's dive into some code examples. Uh, let's start with a simple example, a GHZ state, where three or more qubits are being entangled. So here you can see the Python code within CUDA Quantum that describes that. Um, so really, um, the first thing that you will see is something called a kernel. Uh, a kernel is a, a piece of code, a unit of code of program that can be compiled and run on various devices. The kernel here gets a number of qubits as parameters, as you can see, and entangles them using a control xject, and then performs a measurement using MZ. And then we call sample over the kernel, and it's been sampled multiple times. 1,000 is the default. And then for n equals 3, you can see uh, that's kind of a typical output that you might get. Either all of the qubits will be 0, or all of the qubits will be 1, and there will be some distribution uh, between the different samples. So that's great. That's, uh, you know, the previous examples ran on my CPU within a few seconds and I was able to get the results, but what if I want to run more qubits? So the only thing I need to do when I'm writing CUDA quantum is really change just the number of n uh, to be 29 and then set a specific target. As you can see, your target equals NVIDIA means I'm going to use my local GPU. I have a GPU on my laptop and I'm able to run this code with just adding this line. And I'm able to actually simulate 29 qubits uh, on my laptop, on my uh, GPU that I have on my laptop. Um, so that's great. I didn't need to make a lot of effort, and I'm able to immediately scale uh, this example. Um, but what if I want to scale to more than, than one, one GPU? Uh, you probably know that there is an exponential scaling of, of state vector that requires uh, GPU memory pooling. Uh, to simulate systems of about 32 qubits or more, depending on the GPU. And in order to do that, we have a target called NVIDIA-M GPU. And here you can see a table of an estimation of how many GPUs or how many nodes of GPUs you will need in order to run different types, different number of, of qubits. So we talked about scale until now, scaling, the memory of a vector size to a GPU or more than one GPU. Now let's talk about parallelization. Uh, parallelization is really a way to emulate multiple QPUs and running workloads in parallel in order to achieve speed up. So in this example, we're talking about a Hamiltonian. Maybe some of you are familiar with that, but uh, Hamiltonian is a function that describes the total energy of a dynamic system as a sum of terms. It's used in many fields uh, around chemistry and uh, some other fields in order to cal that calculate the Hamiltonian terms. Um, but the advantage here is that they can really be calculated in parallel. 
So let's let's look at this code. Uh, here is a code in this code we are creating again a kernel, and then we create some random Hamiltonian uh, with random terms, uh, ten thousand terms in this case, and we're using a target called Nvidia dash MQPU, and um, that allows us to simulate that on multiple QPUs, emulated QPUs, in parallel. Uh, you see also the observe function here, and observe uh, calculates the expectation values of the Hamiltonian batch, the terms, and distribute them over the multiple QPUs that we have. So if we run that on, uh, in that case, uh, a single node, single GPU, we're getting some output of the expectation value. Um, and then we can also uh, call that in a synchronous fashion. So if, if the queue is long, if the uh, computation takes, takes longer time, there's a way to call that uh, in async form. And there's a way also to specify specific execution parameter, whether you're running on a single node with multi GPUs or a multi node with multi GPUs. So you can really speed up, uh, basically calculate all of these terms in parallel and achieve speed up. And there's also a way to combine both approaches, scale and parallelization. Uh, that's a new target that we recently um, released. It's called remote MQPU target. And uh, for example, in, in this illustration, you can see how uh, each pair of GPUs is an emulated QPU. So in this case, it's GPU has uh, 80 gigabyte of memory. So together each node, each QPU has 160 gigabyte of memory, so we can simulate that size of state vector, but we can also run it in parallel. So if sequentially this type of computation would take one, one hour in this type of um, diagram, it will take only 30 minutes for each emulated QPU to run the, the workflow. Um, so until now we talked about just state vector, how to scale that, how to speed it up. Um, so that's one type of simulator that we have in CUDA quantum, a state vector. It is in CUDA quantum, CUDA state vec. Uh, and you said that you saw that it's limited by memory, right? Exponentially uh, to the number of qubits. So these are the targets that we already seen, NVIDIA, NVIDIA MGPU, NVIDIA MQPU, and remote MQPU that combines the both. We also have tensor network, so it uses CUDA quantum net, it can simulate thousands of qubits in, in cases where um, we see kind of a sparse or low entanglement problem. So for some problems, this can be a really great way to simulate them. And it can also run on multiple GPUs. Uh, and we have uh, matrix product states, so MPS, which is an approximate tensor network method um, with the target of tensornet-mps. In addition to all of the simulator, we also have integration with uh, QPU providers, so Continuum, IMQ, IQM, and, and OQC, and there'll be more coming. Uh, another thing that um, uh, is very useful is the VQE algorithm. Uh, again, it's used for quantum chemistry, quantum simulations, optimization problems. Um, in this example, you can see uh, the VQE here is in order to determine the ground state energy of a physical system. Here it's an H2 molecule. Uh, but what I want you to notice here is the, that you don't need to write everything from scratch. In CUDA quantum, you have uh, some elements that you can use, like the VQE um, primitive. You can use different, different types of optimizations. Here you see the Kobilak optimizer. We have some other optimizers, and you can also have uh, some function of creating the Hamiltonian and so on. So writing something like this becomes easier uh, with CUDA quantum. Um, there's also a way to do noise modeling. So until now, all of the examples that we saw, um, we're assuming perfect qubits, but we know that uh, real qubits are noisy and um, you know, we sometimes want to simulate them, simulate the noise. So in this example, uh, this is just one example of a bit flip error that we can do with CUDA quantum. So here you can see uh, we are defining a, a bit flip channel with uh, one probability uh, of flipping, meaning it will flip every time. And then we define a kernel that performs an X gate on the qubits and then measures it. Uh, and sample it again, like we saw before, but we add the noise model and this time. 
So the qubit here was initialized to zero state, but then after the bit flip, it would be in one state. So when we perform the X operation again, it will be measured at zeros. And you can see here um, the outputs. Uh, and then also I, I ran the same thing without the noise, and you can see that, that we got one 100% uh, um, of the time. So without the noise model, uh, bit flip wouldn't happen, and um, we'll get one all the time. So this is just one example. We have different types of uh, noise models in code quantum, um, basically uh, all of the cross-channels uh, operations, uh, we support them. Okay, so uh, that was a kind of a quick run of some code examples uh, in code quantum that will help you to get started. I have a list of links here. Uh, I'll also paste them in the in the Discord channel. I think that would be useful, uh, where you can get the code quantum Python wheels. Um, like I mentioned, we're an open source project, so I have a link here to the repo. You can take a look at the code. You can report issues and kind of see uh, open issues there. Uh, we have documentation, I have the link here, API reference and language specification. Uh, there's some technical blogs that I, I shared there as well uh, in a marketing page. And then on the right side, you'll see like the specific references to everything we talked about today, the installation, the multi-GPU workflows that include also the multi-QPUs, simulators and how to backend the noise modeling, and some code examples and tutorials that will help you to get started. Um, yeah. So about the hackathon, uh, we are giving the top 39 teams access to a Hey 100 uh, with 80 gigabyte GPUs uh, from today afternoon to uh, the 19th afternoon. And then the top 10 teams will get access to four GPUs. So these teams can really try all of these different multiple GPUs scenarios um, and, and then you can get uh, like really performance improvements. We have prizes too. So the first prize you get up to four uh, uh, GeForce RTX uh, 4090 GPUs, one for each team member, plus two weeks of support with Denver, our partner. And second place uh, and third place, you can also get up to um, one GPU per team member. And the only thing you need to qualify is use Code Quantum in your project and uh, just format the project with some abstracts at the top. Uh, you know, what the project does, why it is important, where you're, going, where you're using Kuda Quantum, any performance, the kind of numbers or results that you think are interesting in the project, and uh, we'll consider them for the prices. Um, and it's very easy to get started. So if you're one of the 39 top teams, you already got an email, so you've got the password there, and you just go to the link on the left, you just uh, put your password, and then you have an environment that already has everything that you need. Kuda Quantum is installed there. We have a couple of notebooks that, uh, with some examples that you can get started. Um, and yeah, let's start hacking. Awesome. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Thanks, Ifrat. That was really nice. Um, OK, we have some questions that I want to get to. So uh, let, let's go right ahead here. We have a question from Dentucky Kirby. Um, the relationship between CPUs and QPUs seems to be symbiotic at this point, I guess. Um, interesting choice of words. But uh, what are the challenges, if any, with getting the GPU to QPU relationship up to par? Or is there any compilation steps under the hood that are non-trivial? Um, so first of all, you know, uh, the getting into par, uh, maybe specimen in terms of performance, but really, GPUs are going to excel in, one, in some of the things and QPUs are going to excel in others. And it's really about working together uh, in order to achieve a uh, hybrid application. That, that's what I, I think. Um, in terms of uh, compiling, so uh, we do have a, a compiler tool chain where we can actually emulate a QPU on a GPU. Uh, in that case, we're taking the CUDA quantum code and optimizing it in a way that would run on a QPU, whether it's emulated or a real QPU. Uh, I'm, I'm not sure if that really answers the, the question, but uh, I hope that helps. Yeah, yeah. if, and if uh, that doesn't answer your question, Dentucky Kirby, please uh, respond back. Um, OK, we have another question from uh, Panos Konst. Um, this is interesting. Uh, I, I was a Julia user in grad school, so this person might be a Julia user as well. Is CUDA quantum supported with the Julia language? Uh, not at this moment. We're thinking about that or kind of extending it. But right now, uh, we support C++ and Python. Cool, cool. Interesting. Nice. Um, 
I have a couple questions from my end too. Um, so, what, so this is an open source project, which is great. Uh, one of the things, and I, I, I think this is something you hear a lot, um, and it's getting a lot better for sure. Dealing with GPUs can sometimes get like really, really hairy. Um, so contributing, I at least I found uh, in my experience in grad school, like trying to contribute to open source projects that had any GPU stuff going on, like it was just really hard for me to get into. So are there like really good first issues on the GitHub right now that are, 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 are or will there be good first issues for people to tackle maybe to like contribute to uh, CUDA Quantum? Um, yes, I'm not sure if they are right now, but sure. we definitely want to add them. Uh, we uh, we love being an open source project, and we do look for contributions, or suggestions, or feature requests. And um, yeah, we want to participate uh, even more in this type of events. Um, so yeah, if, if if anyone has any idea, uh, please uh, get in touch with us uh, on GitHub or or any any other place. We did accept a couple of contributions before, and we're open for any ideas, um, and especially uh, open source contributions as well. Yeah, we'll be really happy to, to hear from you. Nice, cool. Um, another question I have is, um, so is there, any, uh, is there any interesting like quantum chemistry stuff in the works for CUDA Quantum uh, in, in the near future with future releases? Um, yeah, so we already have some support already. Mm -hmm. I, I showed it. Briefly, in yep. the, the VQE slide, uh, where we have support for building Hamiltonians and, and calculating expectation values uh, and the VQE construct. Uh, we are, we will have like uh, more advanced tutorials around chemistry. We're also working with some uh, kind of partners and customers in specific projects. We'll share them once, once they're ready. Um, but the potential of uh, performance improvements is really high here mm -hmm. because of uh, the specific type of, of uh, calculations you have in, in chemistry applications where you can really take advantage of multiple GPUs and multiple QPUs and the combination of them, right? So I showed this example of a Hamiltonian where you can, uh, first of all, uh, calculate the terms in parallel, but then for each QPU, emulated QPU, you can use multiple GPUs in order to scale the, the number of qubits that you support and, and the size uh, of the memory. So you can find, it, it will take some experimentation, but you can find a sweet spot, right? If you have access to multiple GPUs, you can find a sweet spot between parallelization and scale and really try, uh, be able to achieve um, significant performance improvements. Right. Awesome. Okay. Well, we'll leave it there. Um, Efrat, you'll be on the Discord as well, from what I understand. So, uh, people, if you do have any questions about CUDA Quantum, uh, Discord's the place to be. Uh, we'll put the link to the Discord in the Twitch chat as well. Um, Efrat, it was lovely to have you with us today. I'm so glad we can learn more about CUDA Quantum, at least enough to get started. And uh, lots of stuff from NVIDIA for the Open Hackathon, stuff to win. Um, there's even a quantum computing internship and a research scientist position on our job board that you can check out. Um, thanks, Efrat, for joining us today. Have a great rest of your day, and uh, hope you enjoy the rest of QHack. Thank you.